Every year in New Zealand, hundreds of new restaurants and cafes open, and over half of them fail within the first year. That's where I come in, and this week's calamity is the Chocolate Cafe in Howick. This cafe is really uninviting. What meat is there? Because i got a mouthful of cabbage. I thought we at least did some things well. The food was atrocious. I wouldn't eat in there again. Don't tell me I know nothing about it. Well, you don't. My father owns a restaurant, a very successful restaurant worth millions of dollars. Her mother's an interior designer and her father's a restaurateur. What happened here? I'm John Polino. I've worked in restaurants my whole life. First New York, now New Zealand. I'm a restaurant fixer. Give me a dive and in just a week, I'll go in and make it a winner. The quaint seaside suburb of Howick, Auckland. A picturesque village steeped in history with a vibrant local community. There are dozens of restaurants and cafes competing for the customer dollar here, but the Chocolate Cafe is barely staying in the game. Hi. Owned by Victoria, who runs the place, and her partner Jared, who works as her weekend kitchen hand. During the week, it's his day job that keeps this place afloat. They opened their pride and joy 12 months ago. I love chocolate. Oh, what a silly question. <laughs> I don't understand people who don't like chocolate. <laughs> Their vision, an indulgent cafe, producing specialty chocolates and delicious treats. We pictured that this would be a place to come where you wanted a treat. But instead, a truly confused daytime cafe with tea room style food, come chocolate shop, retailing other products, come evening dessert restaurant, if there's a booking. This is an eatery having a crisis. And it's not hard to see why. With backgrounds in call centre management, these guys are seriously short on experience. I didn't even look at the existing business, what it was doing. I had the opportunity to do that, but I chose not to. They both work seven day weeks, but with just a trickle of customers, they're losing thousands of dollars. I just thought that people would just come after dinner for an evening treat, but that didn't eventuate. After paying their bills, but not drawing salaries, Victoria and Jared are still going backwards to the tune of $6,300 every month. It is disappointing that we're not as popular as I thought we would be, and I didn't ever expect it to be easy, but I didn't expect it to be this hard. <laughs> And that's why John's here. With only five days to turn this place around, he needs five minutes alone to case the joint. I have no idea what it is. Is it a chocolate place? Is it a cafe? I'm not sure, not, at least I don't get it from the signage. Inside, it's not much better. The layout of this restaurant is a disaster. This cafe is really uninviting. Look at this blackboard, I mean, why the paper? Is that so that it stands out? I don't know. That's horrible. And what's on it is hardly decadent. I can't stand wrapped sandwiches because this might as well just be a takeout place, not a cafe. I want to see nice, fresh food. And then this whole corner here looks like someone's office. Oh, great. Co you know, I was getting worried they didn't even have a coffee machine. Oh, no, is she baking everything in a convention oven? It's like a microwave. John's seen enough. Time to hear what Victoria has to say. The things that we have are really indulgent and delicious. You've set this place up to be indulgent? Who designed it? Did you design it yourself? Or? Yes. Yeah? Okay. Victoria has strange ideas about indulgence. We've got chocolate retail products, loose chocolates, and then we also have delicious cakes and the best hot chocolates. The best hot chocolates? The best hot chocolates, <laughs> yeah. Now for the food. She may think her menu is indulgent, but that's for John to decide. So come on up when you're ready and let me know what you'd like. Okay, I have to come up there. Yes, please. Okay. Despite John being the only customer, Victoria insists he come to the counter right. for service. I'll have the chicken satay quiche. Mm -hmm. And it's not looking that inspiring. From chicken and peach croissant to toast with cream cheese, the menu's hardly a chocolate lover's dream, as the cafe name would suggest. And I'll have a flat white as well. Okay, great. Thanks. Is that a flat white? Yes. This is your flat white? Yes. 
Well, first of all, it's in a latte glass. Um, so really, it's actually a layered latte. Hopefully, it tastes better than it looks. That's not very good. But out back, the pressure of a single customer is proving too much for kitchen hand Jared. We've had an issue. What's that? Oh, uh, the, the croissant doesn't look like a croissant anymore. Would you like a wrap instead? If, okay, I'll try a wrap. Excellent, thanks. If the team aren't coping now, how will they manage when it's busy? This is atrocious. This is indulgent? I gotta unwrap my own plastic wrap sandwich? If you're gonna bring in sandwiches like this, present them well, don't give them to a customer of wraps. I'll be late to go back to work by the time I unwrap this thing. How do I get to this? Man, this thing better be worth it. No, oh, it tastes like I'm eating a garden. The quiche. Obviously this was microwaved. And cake are just as bad. It's mediocre. Three out of four dishes haven't made the grade. Final hope rests with the chocolate. Mmm, beautiful. Wish I had a coffee to drink a pound with them. Although they're delicious, bought in chocolates hardly satisfy Victoria's chocolatier dream. Have a seat. John needs to spill the beans on Victoria's food, and she probably won't like it. Why would I come to your cafe for something that I can just get in a, in a, a $2 takeout shop? I don't agree. I think that's a beautiful wrap, and I think that it's um, big and generous, and it's got lots of meat inside it. And What meat is there? Because I, you know, I got a mouthful of cabbage. This here, this quiche, I mean, this is not fresh, is it, really? It was frozen. It's frozen, okay. But, yeah. Okay, so talk to me about the coffee. Well, you've, you've been to cafes. Yeah. You've had a flat white. Yeah. Does it look like that? This is a latte glass. People like the glasses. It's a latte cup. If I came here for a flat white, I would not come back. I could see your vision in, in being a decadent chocolate cafe. Yeah. But this does not work with that. It's oh, I disagree with that. No, okay. You I can think disagree with a, everything. I think that's uh, a really rich, decadent delicious cake. If this battle continues, it's going to be a long week that's about to get worse. I've been here before. Okay, <laughs> yeah. And uh, I have something here to show you. Okay. Hidden camera footage taken one week ago when John came in for lunch. Coming into the place, it's a little bit confusing. Yeah. Um, because you, you don't know if to sit down or go up to the counter. A menu being in the middle of the seating area makes you feel that you're supposed to sit down and order off the menu. Let's see what else we got here. It, it doesn't taste like rich chocolate. It's uh, gooey. Victoria uses a thickening agent in her hot chocolate to trick the consistency of melted chocolate. And John's not impressed. I did not leave here thinking that that was the best hot chocolate I've ever had. I actually left here thinking that was one of the worst hot chocolates I've had. Wow. But John still has one last blow for Victoria. He didn't even ask us how our meal was or anything. Horrible service. That was horrible. I, mean, I would not want to go back there. How do you feel about that? I feel really sad. Do you think that I'm the only one that would do that? Um, obviously not, no. No. It can't be, it can't be just me. I think we do great hot chocolates. I think they're very rich. I think a lot of people tell me, gosh, that was delicious, it was so rich, I couldn't finish it. She's quite upset, you know, because it's, it's, it's a bit personal. But I'm here to help her. I'm here to actually turn her around so at the end of the day, she's actually quite happy and she's successful. I knew things weren't perfect, but I thought we at least did some things well. I have customers say that we do things well, but I don't want to do that. To see how bad things really are, John's taking a look at a typical lunch from behind the scenes with customers. It may be quiet, but Victoria's still being staunch and not taking table orders. Are you waiting for someone or? Uh, no. Oh, no? Just pop one up when you're ready to oh, order. Okay. Cool. So, Victoria, you have to come back here and pretty much make everything, right? Yes. Uh, how is that for you? The word that comes to mind is disjointed. That you have these conversations with a customer and then minutes later you're out the back here 
and they're doing goodness knows what. What do you got in there? Um, crepes. A crepe? Yeah, we get them uh, supplied to us. On top of buying in wraps, sandwiches and chocolates, these guys are also serving crepes from a packet heated in a microwave. John can't believe it. And as more customers arrive, Victoria's still out the back. You gotta get everything cleaned up. Oh yeah, I hate this. Yeah. It's horrible. I'd prefer that you take care of the customers. I have never had anyone criticize me for being too clean. That to oh, me is, not, that's Cleaning bizarre. is good. You're not getting the point here. The point here is you have people sitting in your dining room and you're back here worrying about dishes. You should be over there worrying about the customers. Sure. So what do customers make of the place? Now the wrap, oh, it was nice and fresh. Probably maybe just a bit, sort of a bit cabbagey, <laughs> would be the word. A bit too um, sort of tasteless. I thought that it lacked a bit of atmosphere. Just quite cold, I suppose, would be the way I describe it. it. Needs to be a little bit more decadent, I think. If I came back again, I would just be to pick up like some chocolate takeaway. I, w I wouldn't eat in there again. The truth of the matter is, these guys need a serious game plan to turn things around fast. First up, a lesson on customer service and presence out front. John needs to cull the uninspiring menu and give the food a direction of indulgence. Then a makeover to sort the layout and create decadence. Next, a crash course for Victoria in chocolate making to help her realise her dream. And lastly, some serious tips on marketing to get more people in the door and more cash in the till. Coming up, will Victoria handle changes to the menu? Oh, la, la. I don't know yet how quickly I'm going to be able to churn out crepes. Or will she continue to put up a fight? I'm being taught a lesson that I don't need to learn. Day two in Howard, and John has a challenge on his hands trying to save the seriously troubled chocolate cafe from financial ruin. Business is bad for Jared and Victoria, so despite her reluctance, they need to take John's advice on board if they're to relaunch with a massive opening party at the end of the week. So, lesson one on John's game plan, customer service and staff presence. Listen, I got something really exciting for lunch that I want to try, so we got to move this chocolate display. Victoria's display cabinet is an obvious eyesore and hardly a customer attraction, despite its contents. But what's worse, it screens her off from view, a bad first impression that could determine whether customers stay or go. Wow. How does it feel? So open. Oh my god, it just feels yeah. so opened up. John's temporary solution today aims to show Victoria that a great cafe is all about excellent service and customer interaction. And Victoria must be accessible and present to customers. Now for the food. If the chocolate cafe was an indulgent experience, then the food should be stunningly sumptuous and wickedly rich. But the bought-in wraps, sandwiches, chocolates and frozen pre-purchased crepes here don't make that great. So John's devised a plan to give the place a crowd-pulling point of difference. And he's called on Auckland's finest crepe maker and owner of Torchon French Creperie, Alex Rue, to give him a hand. How are you? I've got a present for you. Fantastic. I think it's a great stuff to make crepes. Yeah. It's from France. So with this you can make proper crepes. Excellent. Alex is armed with an industrial crepe plate necessary for making the perfect crepe. And he makes it look too easy. Voila! It's your turn, Victoria. Okay. Take my place. Thank you. Oh. Gently. Yes. You must take the edge. Pull only the edge. Mm -hmm. Take it. No. Oh, it's okay. quite I, stuck. I'll show you. You want stack? Oh la la. <laughs> But it's harder than it looks. Maybe Jared has the magic touch. You go too fast. Take it. Quick, 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 quick. So should I just scrape this one off and start again? Yes. Yeah. After some trial, they finally get the hang of it. Voila. Bon appétit. But will their crepes meet with their own approval? Pretty good. Pretty good. Wow. I like it. What a flavor really punches. Serving fresh crepes will stand this cafe apart from any other in the area. And if Victoria and Jared can get it right, 
Being so cheap to produce, they should make a good profit as well. Yesterday, John wasn't impressed by Victoria's caramel mud cake and needs to tackle this highly sensitive issue. Victoria stays up late at night, baking very average cakes one at a time in her tiny convection oven, possibly the core of her cake problem. John knows there's room for improvement and is suggesting in this case that she stock delicious buy-in product to save herself a fortune in time, offer a better product and increase profit. To start, he's joining forces with Jared. Cut them into little squares so that people can just pick it up and taste them, okay? Sure. And hitting the streets with tasters of a dark, rich, decadent looking buy-in cake to test his theory. I prefer the darker one. I like the dark one. And you like the, you dark, like the dark one? one. <laughs> you'd, prefer the, yeah. you'd prefer the dark one. I should probably go the dark one. It's in a bit moisture. I like that. Okay. As well as Victoria's less chocolatey home cooked option. Yeah, do you like this one best? Most people prefer the buy in. Time for Jared to break that news. The majority did like the, um, the brought in one. Okay. Um, mainly for the reason that it was more moist. Okay. But a significant amount of people did like the one that we had made as well. Okay. So it doesn't have to be a case of us slaving here until 10 at night if we, if we don't want it to be because we've got better things to do with our time. Yes and no. I can tell you the profit margin difference between a bought in cake and a cake that's sold whole and it wouldn't be worth my time even doing it. But Victoria has yet to get her head around the figures. Did you forget to put your labour into the cost of that cake? My profit is my labour. No, no, your profit's not your labour. Your labour well, has to be I'm paid not, for. What, no, no, when I'm making the cake myself... Your time is valuable. Because when you start getting busy and you need to start making 10 cakes, 20 cakes, are you going to be coming here early in the morning and then baking all night long? Because then you're going to get to a point where you say, well, you're going to have to put a baker on and it's not going to be profitable. Because at the end of the day, when you pay your labour, that's what's going to put you out of business. Have you managed restaurants? No. Have you ever been responsible for costing? No. No, so then you know nothing about it. Don't tell me I know nothing about it. Well, you don't. My father owns a restaurant, a very successful restaurant slash hotel slash casino slash bowling alley worth millions of dollars. And I have discussed these issues with him. And? What did he tell you? Stay up till 10.30 at night baking? Is that what he told you? Because if you're not resting because you have to stay late at night, that doesn't help you think clear and actually take care of the customers during the day. Mm -hmm. I'll just agree with you, it's much easier. What I'm currently feeling is that I'm being taught a lesson that I don't need to learn. He told me that I know nothing, which is absolute falsity. She's extremely stubborn. I've asked her, you know, why she does it this way, why she does it that way, when it, it's never done that way, and she'll say, well, you have to prove to me otherwise. Victoria's cafe is in deep trouble. Like it or not, she needs John now more than ever. So today, he's organised some customers to try out the open plan counter and more personable service. A hot chocolate comes in milk, dark or white chocolate. To prove that buy-in cakes can be a hit. Absolutely divine. <laughs> a true test of a good whisky cake is it doesn't reek of whisky and this passes the test. And finally, the special of the day, crepes. John wants to show how they'll be an exciting point of difference. To see what the customers are going to think when they come up and they see the crepes being made fresh. The, the person who's making the crepes is standing back there greeting the customers in. We just want to see how it goes today, see how that works. The first crepe is complete without a hitch. But the second time round... We'll get there in the end. There's still room for improvement. <laughs> Really sorry about the weight there. That's nice. But how did the crepes measure up? The crepe was very nice, as good as I've had in Paris. It was absolutely delicious. I had a ham and cheese crepe, yeah, it was lovely, yeah. Next time I'll Definitely. try a different one. The crepes were a hit with customers, and cooking them out front provided a unique opportunity for customer interaction. Or how'd it? But most importantly, Victoria seemed to enjoy the exercise. But the people that had the crepes and the desserts really love them. Yeah. I think some people were actually quite excited about the crepes. Yeah, people enjoyed watching it. I think yeah. it was quite fun. So why now is John still getting resistance? I, I don't know yet how quickly I'm going to be able to churn out crepes and how easily I'm going to be able to do other things at the same time. Just as well John's persistent. He's still got a few days to bring her around. 
In the meantime, these guys have a big task ahead, clearing everything out in preparation for John's team of renovation experts who arrive tomorrow. Coming up, has Victoria finally turned the corner? Bringing everything out front is what I have been hanging out to do since two minutes after we opened. Or will she continue to put up a fight? She's been a struggle all along. She doesn't trust what people say to her. Howick, Auckland, where John's having an arduous week saving the chocolate cafe from financial doom. Owners Victoria and Jared have no previous cafe experience. The bought-in sandwiches and wraps are disappointing at best. And Victoria's cakes are no better. The layout and decor are sterile and unimaginative. And consequently, the chocolate cafe is losing money by the hour. They can't afford to close for long, so John's facelift has to happen fast. His team of experts are on hand and ready for two days of action. Oh, very kind of cool. I love when you get the renovations going because it starts to, you know, the, the creating begins and then things start to really fall into place and look really good. But John's worried. Victoria hasn't made it easy for him so far. I'm not sure how she's going to respond because she's been a struggle all along. She doesn't trust what people say to her, even the experts. Um, but I hope she starts to. I hope she starts taking on board that we're really here to help her and that she believes in us. And Victoria's first test, saying farewell to her sterile, bland colour scheme. My mum is an interior decorator and she was not convinced and uh, she, she didn't like the pink. I love it, I think that the pink reflects my personality. In that case, pink must be for stubborn and what better time for the pink to go. Next up, layout. On the rare occasions when Victoria was out front, the old counter with all its clutter hid her from customers. You know, the counter is extremely important mm -hmm. because what you're trying to put across to the customer needs to be displayed here in the counter. The yeah. food, how you want them to order, you know, what you want them to do. John has a plan to get Victoria out of the kitchen and back into the eye of the customer. We're going to be able to actually take almost everything you have in the back there that you're creating up front here. So not only do they see you creating it, it also keeps you out with the public. And John also wants to ensure customers know to approach the counter. We're going to place the menu in a spot that works so that people can be right here, order from you, look at the menu. The reason that I put the menu up on the wall there was so that customers who were standing outside, that they didn't feel obliged that they had to come in, just wanted to have a read, then they could do that. Well, what we do is we put a menu either on the front window, nicely displayed, or even something outside. Bringing everything out front is what I have been hanging out to do since two minutes after we opened. Victoria's finally starting to come around as the facelift into all things luxury continues. That's decadent, eh? It's nickel and bronze. But one thing that didn't spell decadence was the old name. Now, John has a big surprise, but it's anyone's guess how Victoria and Jared will take it. Really like the name, really like the sign. Yeah. Like how it ties through. I like the flow, everything's coming together really well. And I honestly believe it's not what I would have picked, but I honestly believe it all ties in as a big package and it makes sense. So, with the next best thing to a positive response on the new name Chocolat, time now to get Victoria's other branding up to scratch. And to help him out, John's called in branding consultant and packaging expert Stephen Gravel. Victoria currently retails individual chocolates, as well as expensive boxes of other people's chocolates. What sort of take-up are you getting at the moment? How many people buying these? A few. We maybe sell a, a few boxes a week. What I think you should do is try and think of yourselves as not just the owners of a chocolate shop, but the owners of a chocolate of a brand, a chocolate brand. Mm -hmm. By boxing and branding the individual chocolates, Victoria will create a specialty item of her own. Let's just look at, say, the way Belgian chocolates would be packed. We can get this pre-printed with your brand name on it. Most importantly, packaging her own chocolates will ensure a greater profit margin. We could do it in the same types 
script as you've got on your wall. What we get is the branding that you've got on the interiors coming through onto the boxes. So with new branding underway, the renovation continues in the kitchen. The walls are being smashed, creating space to recess the fridge in what was a tiny front counter area. And out front, new lighting helps create that special transformation. The boys are busy building a front counter area that will display the mouth-watering chocolates without shielding Victoria from customers. Chocolat must reopen for the big launch in only two days. So for now, the team work on into the night. Things are going great. I love the artwork on the wall. And you know what? Victoria and Jared are starting to participate and I think they're enjoying it as well. So it's fantastic. I see the makings of a bench seat, which I've always wanted in this cafe. I think it would be beautiful. So I just think it's great. The lights look wonderful. Everything that I see looks beautiful. I'm starting to see that the previous atmosphere and menu that we had was a bit sort of clinical and it, it wasn't necessarily somewhere that you would come to indulge. Victoria may be positive for now, but coming up, will it last? I wanted to buy one of these, and my nanny gave me the money to do it. And will the renovations be complete for the big launch? There were a lot of things to do, but as I can see today, they didn't get done. Back in Howick, Auckland, and John's getting to the end of his week, saving the chocolate cafe from shutting up shop. It's day four, and renovations are in full swing. The previous design, thought by Victoria to be indulgent, didn't even come close. Now John's busy rectifying the situation, and hopes Victoria and Jared approve. Wow, that's beautiful. This fabric will cover the upholstery on John's new bench seat. It's got that richness. It actually takes the colors from the wall as well. It'll look great, believe me. And to complement the new seat, stunning new chairs. If I could have afforded these chairs, this is what I would have picked when we first opened. I really think that they're beautiful. Victoria currently sells other people's chocolates, but her true dream was always to produce them herself. Heavy bills and a lack of funds prevented her from ever achieving this. But today, John is helping her finally realise this dream by sending her to Philippe's Chocolates for training with French chocolatier Philippe himself. But before they can get to the chocolates... Someone talked to me about your hot chocolate. Right. The, the thick hot chocolate? Yeah. OK. What do you put inside? Well, well, we thicken it with corn flour. Victoria's already committed a cardinal chocolate sin, and so far doesn't impress our chocolatier. I drink that drink. Yeah, I yeah. like it. We already know Victoria's idea of indulgence is questionable. Time for the expert to tackle that corn flour. One litre of milk, 120 grams of chocolate. Philippe melts his rich, decadent Belgian chocolate with the milk. Like Victoria's bizarre concoction, this also can be prepared in advance. This is your hot dark chocolate. Beautiful. Bon appétit. It's that easy. Decadently thick and rich and without corn flour. It's delicious. With the hot chocolate sorted, time for Philippe to reveal a treat. He's designed a signature raspberry and French champagne chocolate, especially for Victoria. And she needs to learn how to make it. So then we add the chocolate to the champagne and raspberry. Philippe demonstrates, then Victoria's straight into the thick of it. That one's not beautiful. It's your first one. After a couple of million, it will be okay. Ah, <laughs> hollow in the middle. I don't know many people can do it in the first time. This is Victoria's lifelong dream, so she's feeling the heat, especially with the expert chocolatier circling her like a shark. You see, it's not so easy to make chocolate. Victoria may need more practice, but if she perfects this skill, her own specialty chocolates will fulfill her vision. And more importantly, if she does it well, make her money. Back at the cafe, the renovation continues. we got a lot more to do. Um, it's going to be a late night, I think. And tonight, John's putting Victoria to the test again. He wants crepes to be the main dish here, along with the chocolatey treats, but there need to be savoury options. 
so he's asked Victoria to come up with two flavours to try out for the new menu. Actually, I really like the flavours of this, and I think this would make a great special for the vegetarians, but I love how this tastes, and I love also the way it flows inside the crate. There's smoked chicken and chickpea as a vegetarian option. And there's plenty of willing helpers to pass judgment. Give me your honest opinion. I had the chicken crepe mm -hmm. and it probably, I guess it could have had a little bit more heat. I think the edges um, could have been a bit crispier like we had them the other day. That chickpea one was, was really good. A bit spicy for my taste. Thanks for being honest because it's really important. Victoria's recipes still need perfecting before tomorrow night's launch, but she's on the right track. Finally, after a tough week, the day of the big relaunch has arrived. But John's concerned, work is far from finished. They were really tired last night, so they didn't really want to stay much longer than when we left. And I was hoping they would, because there were a lot of things to do. But as I can see today, they didn't get done. And despite being behind schedule, Victoria's chosen to ignore John's advice and bake her own cakes. She should be perfecting those crepes. But up most on John's mind is getting numbers in tonight. So this morning, the team are arming themselves with Victoria's specialty fudge. So this is your brand. Mm -hmm. And when people see this, they're going to see fine chocolate, exactly what you want them to see. Looks fantastic. And heading out in search of support for the big event. And where better than the local markets. Would you like some complimentary fudge? Ooh, never say no to complimentary fudge. Well, that's very nice. Getting people on board is all about marketing. A big lesson for these guys as the new Chocolat won't survive without it. We've just um, done some renovations on our cafe around the corner. It's, oh, okay. um, it was the chocolate cafe, it's now Chocolat. Hi. Would you like some complimentary fudge? Definitely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> marketing doesn't have to be expensive. John's trying to teach Victoria and Jared that a small effort can make a big difference. This is such a little community neighborhood where people actually know each other. So you've got to get part to be part of that community and they'll come by to your cafe. Back at the restaurant, John still has to sort out the problem of Victoria's insane latte glasses. And to help, he's enlisted support from toasted espresso expert barista Chris Innes. If I came in and received a flat white and a glass, I wouldn't be happy, I wouldn't come back again. The majority of people out there want a flat white in a cup or something very similar to that. Often when I take flat whites out and a glass like that, customers say, wow, that's so beautiful, it's different from everywhere else and it makes me feel really special that it's such a beautiful glass. That's a latte. So therefore... Well, I'm telling you the feedback that I've yes. received from my customers when I take them a flat white in that glass. I'm saying to you now is that why don't you deliver it as a latte? Victoria may not like what she's hearing, but Chris has years of experience to back him up. What we're trying to do is establish and continue a standard which the coffee industry has developed over the last, you know, decades. By delivering it in the right vessel, you're then delivering what the customer wants and what the customer would expect. Fair enough. It's a disappointment for Victoria to learn she's wrong, but John has a last-minute treat to sweeten the blow. Oh, that's so cute. Is that not beautiful? Yeah. I love the pink. And there's your label on there, and yeah. your logo, and your, your branding. It's gorgeous. It is beautiful. Philippe has sent Victoria her first batch of chocolates, which she can brand Chocolat. The idea is that you're going to start making your own chocolates. Awesome. And boxing your own chocolates. Yeah. yeah. You're excited about that, aren't you? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, great. And to make sure Victoria continues her efforts. Oh, is this what I think it is? To make your own chocolates. <laughs> That's fantastic. That's so great. <laughs> oh, I feel sad because I wanted to buy one of these. And my nana gave me the money to do it. Victoria is extremely close to her nana, who loaned her money to help realise her chocolate-making dream. We ended up using that money for other things. I felt bad that I had used my nana's money for the thing that she didn't intend. That's okay. She wanted us to, to be um, making our own chocolates. John hopes to get Victoria and her dream back on track, a boost she desperately needs. 
next, the pressure's on as John delivers a final surprise. I have a critic coming in. Okay. Right. And I'm not going to tell you who he is. And how will Victoria and Jared cope with their biggest crowd yet? What's going on with these crepes that they came back from the table? Did they not like them? Howick, Auckland where Victoria and Jared had failed to find a direction. You've set this place up to be indulgent? They opened their dream cafe with no experience in a highly competitive neighbourhood. It is disappointing that we're not as popular as I thought we would be. And with big overheads... My daddy gave me the money to do it. We ended up using that money for other things. They struggled to pull off their even bigger ideas. If I could have afforded these chairs, this is what I would have picked when we first opened. Consequently, they were going backwards to the tune of $6,300 every month. And despite staunch resistance... I'm being taught a lesson that I don't need to learn. John's tried to teach them as much as he can. I think some people were actually quite excited about the crepes. People enjoyed watching it, I think yeah. that was quite fun. To help turn their cafe around. As well as giving the place a desperately needed facelift. So tonight's the big relaunch, and it's action stations for Victoria and Jared as they rush to complete the final touches. We have a lot to do before we open, and uh, tonight's the big night, right? But first, John has one last blow. I have a special guest coming in tonight. <laughs> I have a critic coming in. Okay. He's a friend of mine, right. and I'm not going to tell you who he is, so we had to be on our best behavior, mm -hmm. and we really have to show great hospitality tonight. Okay, great. Okay? Mm -hmm. Chocolate Cafe has undergone a massive facelift. Before, Victoria's decor was sterile, cold and stark. Now, a new warm colour scheme is luxurious and inviting. The plastic furniture lacked any personality. Now, striking new furniture sets the scene. The old name was confusing and directionless. The new French touch evokes elegance and opulence. The menu with its paper attachments was tatty and unprofessional. But now with a stunning gilded frame, it's smart and sophisticated. Finally, the cluttered counter hid Victoria from customers. The stunning new space is open and inviting, and the coffee machine keeps her front of house. With the transformation complete, the first customers pour through the door off the back of the team's marketing efforts this morning. And amongst them, our critic, Luke Dello. I'm expecting a bit of luxury in here, to see the chocolates being made in the background. Looking forward to going in there and having a bit of a sugar high now. Tonight's an opportunity for Victoria and Jared to promote their new menu. And guests will be treated to the hopefully improved savoury crepes. A fine selection of cupperty cheeses. A decadent chocolate fondue. And the jewel in the crown, Victoria's own chocolates. Yeah, yeah, sure. We have a uh, cheese board as well. Right. What else have you got available? Uh, tonight we have uh, coffee, crepes and uh, fondue. It's not the warmest welcome for our critic. Thanks to Philippe though, Victoria's abandoned her cornflour concoction for authentic thick hot chocolates. And finally gets her head around having flat whites in a cup. Jared, can you take that out as soon as you can? Just yeah. dump those dishes yeah, yeah, yeah. Right I think you're making these in less than 60 seconds. Yeah, it's really great. Next for Luke, a chicken crepe. Yep. Well. He's not impressed though, and he's not the only one. What's going on with these crepes that they came back from the table? Did they not like them? They seemed pretty neutral, so it's hard to tell to be honest. It seems Victoria made no attempt to improve on her crepes after all. A big mistake that could prove bad for business. To sweeten things up, she's offering one of her own specially branded raspberry champagne treats to everyone. So please feel free to take one each. Thank you. And the cheese platters and chocolate fondues are proving a big hit. This is my kind of food. <laughs> How'd you enjoy your fondue and your, and your cheese board? It's really great, thank you. Are you enjoying the way the place looks? Yeah, yeah, I, I hadn't seen it beforehand, but um, this is really nice. Most of the punters are going home happy, but what about our critic? The cabinetry at the front, fantastic. The chocolates on display, the cakes on the right, sensational. Chicken crepes, 
tasted like chicken sausages. The sauce was too heavy, there was just not enough spice in there. Salt and pepper would have made that totally different. My welcome was really, really poor. Felt really awkward. Felt like I walked into a school principal's office and I had to do all the talking. They need to work on service. Vibrancy, get energised, get it right. Time to break the news to Victoria and Jared. The critic happened to be the person at the, at the front door there. I the thought people. so. <laughs> One thing he wasn't too happy with was the uh, chicken crepe. Did you forget the season? Yeah, I did. But that's not all. The hospitality on his entrance was uh, not quite there. You just have to work on that, really work on inviting people in here like they're coming into your house. So I'll be back in a month. Okay. Now, um, uh, we're coming back to make sure you are doing everything exactly the way we taught you, okay? Great. I think that they have a good opportunity here. I don't know if she'll grab it. I'm afraid she'll go back to her other ways and do things the way she wants to do them just because she wants to. Man, we're just a million miles apart. So I'm feeling a bit confused because this particular image is not an image that I created. So I don't know whether or not I can uphold it. After all John's efforts this week, he leaves disappointed. When John left a month ago, Chocolat had potential. A refreshed new image from top to bottom was in keeping with Victoria's indulgent vision. The tea room style buy-in product was gone. And in its place, a menu of crepes, delicious cakes, and Victoria's very own handmade chocolates. But there were problems. Victoria had struggled with John's advice every step of the way. Don't tell me I know nothing about it. Well, you don't. I'll just agree with you, it's much easier. And when John left, she didn't know if she would continue all his hard work. I don't know whether or not I can uphold it. But a month later, and John's back in Howick. First impressions, the place is quiet. So how's it going? Pretty good. Yeah, yeah very good. Had lots of great feedback about the changes. Has business picked up at all? Not really, no. The, the first day after we reopened, it was a really big day. That day we did three times what we would normally do on a Sunday, so it was really great. If Victoria and Jared had capitalised on that custom with great food and excellent service, they might be in a better position now. Since then it's pretty much been back to normal. And uh, Jared, how are you finding things? I really enjoy making crepes. Every time I come in here, even if there's no customers to make a crepe for, I just make a crepe anyway. Just. <laughs> are you making your own chocolates yet? Or? Yeah, yeah, really good. We've made seven different flavours so far. Wow. And they are selling really well. People love that they're made on site. Victoria, at least, has satisfied a lifelong dream to make her own chocolates, as well as her initial vision for the cafe. Yeah. Very real tasting, real chocolatey taste. I've got the one with alcohol and I can taste a hint of rum, so that's good. <laughs> it tastes like luxury chocolates, which is, I think, what you want out of a chocolate shop. You want to indulge yourself, you know you're going to pack the pounds on, so do it properly. <laughs> if she keeps this up, with a larger profit margin than the expensive chocolates previously bought in, she will be much better off. It's great to see that she's making things happen with the new chocolates, her own homemade chocolates, and she's working on getting her new labels and sorting out all those products and getting rid of the old stuff. It's great. I hope that she continues with the lessons that we taught her, because if she does, she'll be a great success here. I'm really happy with the end result, um, but the week was tough. And I don't know, perhaps I clung too hard to my own ideas and I made it tough on myself. The experience has been quite... Um ruling actually. Um, I mean the whole time you could see that it was going to be worth it in the end. Yeah I think we've made a lot of um, positive changes. Looking to the future I can really see that this place is going to be popular. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.